What's up guys, thanks for stopping by, hope you're doing good. Today's video is very special in that we're going to be covering something that to my knowledge has never been done before in Valheim. This is a gameplay challenge that was inspired by conversations with chat about whether it'd be possible to basically beat the game in reverse. A decent amount of players seem to think that this was impossible and that's why for a while now I've been working on this video because I thought it'd be super cool to show you guys something this unique and hopefully give some people some information that they didn't know about the game. So in today's video, we're going to be beating Valheim in reverse. Without further ado, let's jump into it. So to provide some context for the rest of this video, we're going to start out by explaining the core challenges of killing all the bosses in reverse order so we all understand what this challenge is all about. First of all, getting a pickaxe. That's obviously a challenge because usually we get our first pickaxe by defeating the first boss, Eatfear. So we need some way of getting a pickaxe that skips the antler pick. Beating your glove because obviously he's going to be our first boss so we need a way to beat him when we're very under geared beating modder which is a key challenge for the same reasons as yag is how to find bone mass this is a key challenge because usually we use the location stones that are found inside crypts and of course we can't get a swamp key to get in the crypt because you get that by being boss too how to get withered bone without a swamp key because usually we find withered bone inside crypts how to get good gear the limitations on what kind of pickaxe we have is going to seriously limit what gear we can find how to beat bone mass which is obviously a cool challenge for the same reasons as the other bosses but we'll get more into that later and i want to do all this without clipping into a crypt because this is something you can do to get into a crypt without a swamp key but it feels way too much like cheating and i feel like this challenge is way more fun without doing this before we get into how i got a pick without finding the first boss i want to let you guys know i'm going to put a card in the top right right now that links to a playlist that contains my entire playlist playthrough of beating Valheim in reverse. So if anyone doesn't believe anything that happens in this video, or you want to see how I did this in more detail, you can see the full playthrough by clicking the playlist in the top right. So this is how I went about getting a pickaxe without fighting the first boss. Basically, the strat is to first find a troll that has a club and then bait him over to a copper vein and then move closer to him to make him attack and dodge the attack. Move close to him again to get him to attack again, dodge again, and then rinse and repeat until I have enough copper for a forge and for a bronze pickaxe. Then we use the same method to collect enough tin to make the bronze for the bronze pick. And that is actually how we get our bronze pickaxe. Okay, so now we've got our bronze pickaxe, things get kind of normal for a little while in this playthrough because now we just use our bronze pickaxe to gather a little more bronze. So we get a full bronze set of armor, a bronze axe, so we have easy access to fine wood, and also some bronze nails so we can make a carve, so we can get around the map a bit faster and also avoid being killed by serpents. So here's where things get interesting again. After finding a plains, finding a Yag location stone, and gathering enough totems, the way we beat Yagloth is by using a strategy that is actually used in Valheim new game speedruns, where runners beat the game with a fresh character. This strategy is essentially an AI manipulation technique and is not considered a glitch in a current speedrun rule set. To do this strategy, we first need to dig a hole that's deep enough so that our head doesn't pop out the top. The hole also needs to be big enough for us to fit inside it and also for us to fit in a sheltered workbench that we can use to repair repair station level one items such as clubs and axes. Once the hole and the workstation is ready, we then use floor tiles to cover up the hole. Then we leave a little hole for us to jump in and how this strat is supposed to work is you summon your glove and quickly go and jump in the hole, seal it above your head and as your glove moves towards you, for some reason his AI doesn't aggro and he will not attack but because he drags his torso along the ground his belly actually clips through the floor tiles and you're able to attack him this takes a very very long time to do compared to beating him in conventional ways and your weapons will break many many times doing this which is why we're only using repair station level one weapons and why we need a workstation so we can infinitely 
keep repairing our weapons. This aspect of this Valheim in reverse challenge that I came up with was actually in danger of not being possible as due to a recent patch in the game that made enemy AI more aggressive, some AI manipulation techniques that use structures are no longer possible as bosses now will instantly destroy certain structures. But for whatever reason, using this strat, we are still able to manipulate your Gloth's AI. This strat's very time consuming, but once you know how to do it, it's very easy for any player of any skill level. For Modder, we're actually going to be using another AI manipulation technique that's used in new game speedruns. For this, we build a structure at the Modder altar. One of the key things with this structure is we want to make sure we have a fire that has a roof so it won't go out. This is actually how we're not going to freeze to death. On this playthrough, I did use Yugloth's ability to protect us when we're in the mountains, and I also used some freeze resistance potions for when we're waiting for our ability to cool down. But by having a fire in this shelter, it means we're able to avoid freezing infinitely which is really important because just like the last AI manipulation technique this fight takes a long time using this strategy so inside the structure we have a workbench to repair our items again and we also have a bed just in case we die so we respawn in safety because we use a bed I actually like to make this structure one half wall higher than usual just so we don't get stuck in the structure when we respawn in bed then for the roof I'm going to use 26 degree thatch roofs the reason I use these roof tiles is because modern can actually see through the gaps in roofs and some speedrunners even go as far as to fill the holes that the 26 degree roofs leave but I personally have had no issues using this strategy without filling the holes on 26 degree roofs I only have the issue where modder still sees us when we use 45 degree roof tiles so once the structure is complete and we've placed our eggs the way you do this strat is just summon modder then you run inside for shelter instantly and close the door and first of all making sure you have tons and tons of arrows i actually don't know the exact number of arrows required but i bring hundreds of arrows throughout this playthrough i collected as much resin and as much feathers as i could so i had as many fire arrows as possible then i also looted any other loose arrows i found and i also made hundreds of wood arrows additional as well i also made a fine wood bow and fully leveled it up so it has slightly higher durability but anyway so long as you have a ton of arrows what you actually do is once modder is summoned you push your character face first into the wall of your structure then you have to aim directly up completely vertically by doing this the tip of your arrow actually clips through the building which allows you to shoot through your roof just like your glove modder does know you're there but she doesn't aggro because she can't see you so usually she just floats directly above your structure and she may move around a little bit so you need to make sure you're aware of where she moves to so you go and stand underneath her again inside your structure and basically i fire one fire arrow and then whilst that dps is active with the fire effect I then change to my next best arrow just so we're not wasting fire arrows because you're not going to do any additional fire damage whilst they're actually on fire so i use the other arrow until the fire effect is not active then i shoot another fire arrow and then i change arrows again you can tell that the fire effect is active because you actually see the numbers that show your current damage of each hit 
through the wall. So I shoot a fire arrow, then I can see the numbers are active, then I shoot the other arrow. And once the DPS numbers for the fire effect disappear, I then shoot another fire arrow. This takes a very long time and your bow is going to break over and over again. So you use the workbench to repair your bow infinitely and with enough arrows. This is another very safe way to kill modder with low tier gear. This is the last AI manipulation technique I use in this playthrough. Okay, so next up is finding the bone mass location. This one's actually fairly simple, but I decided to include it because I know a lot of players don't know about this. In the random stone towers that can spawn inside swamps, there is actually a slight chance that they contain a location stone for bone mass. This is how we find the bone mass location without using a swamp key. The next part of the challenge, however, is actually the single biggest challenge in the whole thing. Finding with the bone might be easy on a normal playthrough, but for killing the bosses in reverse order this is actually one of the things that some people thought was impossible when discussing it in the chat it is however possible it is just extremely unlikely to happen under normal circumstances as you can see from the footage there is actually a chance that with the bone spawns inside chests above ground in swamps this is usually in the chests that can be found in the middle of the stone circles filled with mob spawners the twist however is that the spawn rate for the bones in the chest is actually very low so even though this might look simple in the footage the rng on this is actually insane first of all you need to find a swamp big enough in order for there to be a chance for stone circles to spawn but then it is not a hundred percent that a chest will be there it is actually a random chance whether or not the chest will be there then that chest has to have a withered bone inside it and the chance of that happening is way less than the chance of there actually being a chest this is how many swamps i explored in order to do this it meant that my strategy just had to be to check as many swamps as possible and scour the entire map looking for these chests this seemed to work out best for me to actually find a bone mass location and then go to that bone mass swamp as there is a higher chance that those are larger swamps but it still took a very very long time as you can see by the amount of the swamps that I explored on my map. This took so much time, in fact, that the entire playthrough took approximately 45 hours. And out of those 45 hours, 27 of them was spent almost exclusively looking for Withered Bone. So this part of the run just took insane commitment to just keep looking. Bone Mass's main AI manipulation technique for speedruns actually became obsolete with the patch I mentioned earlier that made bosses more aggressive towards structures. So I decided to just fight Bone Mass straight up. And since we had modder tiers from beating modder at this point, I thought it would be cool to try and get some black metal. So we gathered iron by randomly digging in swamps with a pickaxe to find the hidden scrap piles under the ground that you usually use the wishbone to find. It was easier to find these around the edges of swamps where it meets another biome and it was even easier when the edge of the swamp was on a hill as the scrap piles actually poke out of the slope sometimes. I basically just gathered enough iron to be able to build a blast furnace and a spinning wheel and then I farmed a fueling camp by placing a spawn and a workstation on one of the big boulders nearby, making sure it was a boulder the fuelings couldn't get on. I also gathered the flax from this camp once all the fuelings were dead and used the mats gathered to make a black metal sword and a padded helmet. Just making the padded helmet at this point almost doubled my armor value and actually really helped. After all of the grinding for Withered Bone, when fighting Bone Mass, I decided to leave a load of tombstones around his altar to make the boss fight a little easier by using a Corpse Run buff. The incoming damage reduction made this a much simpler boss fight. I did also make some poison resistance potions so we don't die to his poison attacks. And with the nice DPS, the Black Metal Sword, we finally managed to take care of Bone Mass nicely.
Having a black metal sword at this point makes the rest of the run hilarious. So it's time to show you guys the moment I'm sure you've all been waiting for where we dominate the last two bosses with some late game gear. Because, of course, we did everything backwards. Alright guys, that's just about going to do it for this one. Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a positive comment if you enjoyed this video. This one was really hard to put together, so I hope you enjoyed it. I am streaming almost every day live on this YouTube channel, and also live on Twitch, so I'll leave a link in the description for that. And if you want to support the content financially, you can do so on Patreon, and also by leaving a donation. I'll leave a link in the description to those as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, have a good one.